Hey guys, and welcome into the 32 team mock draft series. Today, we're going to be doing the Los Angeles Chargers today, who have the pick, the sixth overall pick in the NFL draft. Of course, if you are part of the 95% of viewers who are not subscribed, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. We're doing NFL content all the way up until the draft and throughout the whole offseason. We're going to be trying to get everything out as we can. Um, mock drafts are pretty much the central of it right now, trying to get all, every team's mock draft out before the draft actually happens. Uh, when you look at what we've done, we've gone out of order as well. So, of course, if you have a team that maybe is later on the draft, let me know in the comment section below if you want to see them. Tomorrow we're going to have this, the Kansas City Chiefs coming out because I saw a couple guys want to see that. So, of course, leave a like on the video if you do enjoy. Subscribe if you are new, and let's get right into it. At pick six, we have Makai Becton, the offensive tackle out of Louisville, going to the Los Angeles Chargers. Now, the Russell Okung trade was an absolute steal of a trade. What an, I mean, just a perfect trade for the uh, a straight-up swap to get not only younger on the offensive line, but I think better on the offensive line. Um, so you fill that right guard spot with Trey Turner at, from Carolina. Now that left tackle is a glaring hole for the Chargers, and Makai Becton will be able to fill those uh shoes and probably double the size of those shoes as well i mean this guy's an absolute giant six foot seven 364 he has 35 and 5 8 inch arms and 10 inch 10 and 3 fourths inch hands as well he's a behemoth he ran a 5-1 at the combine which is absolutely insane for a guy his size and he did 23 reps on the bench as well um, he's got a seven foot wingspan which is really insane for a guy his size um like i said absolute giant you look at what his, his frame is i mean just an absolute beast he's got a great base great upper arm strength upper body strength that's what you want in a tackle he's athletic as well so i mean if you need him to swing if you need him to drop back i mean there's different uh, scenarios you could put him in. I think he's athletic enough to be able to run them all. And I mean, we already talked about how strength, how how much strength he has. I think that he can really use that to just drive uh, defenders back, pancake, whatever you want him to do. He is going to be able to completely dominate that left side of the offensive line. What's the weakness of him? He's his weight is so inconsistent. Um, it's fluctuated up and down, up and down throughout college. So he really needs to get with a strength and conditioning coach for the Chargers as soon as he gets that draft selection. Um, he needs to make sure what weight they want him to stay at and figure out a way to maintain that. And I think that getting in an NFL program will be able to be just fine with that. Um, he needs to be quicker with his hands and his arms. Um, he's got to get them up faster. He needs to be able to beat out defenders um, with his quickness. If he can get quicker with that size and speed, there's, he might be one of the best left tackles we see in the NFL um, if he's able to completely hone in on that. And he's got to be patient as well. Um, sometimes he's got to let the blocks come to him. He's, he can't always go for them. That's something I think would be very big for him out of Louisville. But, I mean, getting a guy like Mekhi Becton at, at left tackle would completely – diversify what you can do on this offense I mean this offense is one of the one of the most opportunistic offenses looking in you really need an offensive line and that's pretty much all you need um, I love Tyrod Taylor at quarterback and stick around we might maybe there will be somebody else that you're able to get um, but you know Eckler Williams um, Keenan Allen Hunter Henry this is a very talented offense and the defense is so so good I mean one of the best defenses we have in the NFL on the opposite side so um Fill out, fill out that offense as much as you can and figure out what you can do with it. And I think this team can go right back to the playoffs even without Phillip Rivers. At pick 37, we have them selecting wide receiver Jalen Rager out of TCU. Rager falling to 37 is an absolute blessing for the Chargers because behind Allen and Williams, there's really no receivers that you can uh, put out on the field on Sunday without um, being a little bit worried, in my opinion. Uh, Jalen Rager, 5'11", 206. He's got 4'47 speed and a 42-inch vertical, which is absolutely insane for a guy his height. 42-inch vertical. I mean, he's able to jump up for the ball. And then we're going to look at what he did at TCU. He caught the ball 148 times for 2,248 yards. That's an average of 15 yard, 15.2 yards per catch, 22 touchdowns. And on top of that, he ran 25 times for 324 yards and two touchdowns. So he's got that versatility. He's able to run those end arounds. You can even put him in the backfield if you really wanted. Um, he's got the the talent to I mean the quickness to be able to do a lot for an offense and I think that's why a lot of teams have him high on their draft boards and other teams might not have him as high um so things that he does well strengths I, he beats corners on routes um his step on on routes is absolutely impeccable um he's able to to put his foot in the ground and turn direct change directions so well um so I think he can break almost any corner on a route if need be he's one of the best route runners we have in the in the draft this year um he plays all three levels short routes medium routes uh deep routes he's able to complete them all and I think it does it at a very efficient level and also he can really return the ball if you, if you want him to as well um, I think that he's able to get back there and I think you'd want him back there I mean with his his size his strength his speed and on top of that his quickness with uh with breaking on routes I mean you, you translate that into the open field he's gonna be able to break defenders get you some good yardage or some kick returns um, his weaknesses he's got inconsistent with his catches um, 
his radius fluctuates sometimes. He'll make great catches outside of his radius. Sometimes he can't make a catch right inside, so he's got to be able to hone in directly on where he can catch the ball. Um, he can't beat the press at all. You really got to teach him how to beat the press. If if he gets pressed on the line, you might as well just take him out of the play go to your next option because he's not going to be able to get – get to his route and he's got to finish the routes well as well um, but overall getting Jalen Rager to be your wide receiver three on this offense would absolutely help the quarterback at at um, at the helm I mean at, right now I think it's gonna be Tyrod Taylor it could you know it could end up being a Cam Newton or James Winston or it could be somebody else um, we'll have to wait and see but Jalen Rager will really help that offense out you need depth at the receiver position because right now it's like I said Mike Williams and Keenan Allen are pretty much what you got. Um, Jalen Rager, I think, would be a huge, huge fit for the Chargers and would be an absolute explosive weapon. So this offense can take an even bigger step into getting back into what they've been over the past few years. Now at pick 71, I have them selecting quarterback Jalen Hurts out of Oklahoma. Jalen Hurts finds a home in the NFL, and I think he will be a fan favorite in in San Diego, in Los Angeles um, for the Chargers, put him back on the map. Going from a guy like Philip Rivers, who's been there for so long, I think it's ready for a new regime, a kind of a new a new style in uh, L.A., and I think that Anthony Lynn wants that as well. It's why they like Tyrod so much. But you look at what Jalen Hurts has done. He finished second in the Heisman this year. Um, when he transferred to Oklahoma this year, he absolutely did wonders for them. 65% completion uh, percentage with 9,477 9, yards in his career. That's about nine yards per attempt. 80 touchdowns, 20 picks um, over his career. And also on top of that, he carried the ball 614 times for 3,274 yards, about 5.3 yards per carry, and 43 touchdowns in total. Um, and this guy's a complete dual threat when you look at what it is. But he's got he, he kind of reminds me of somebody. Well, as I, as I talk about more, I'll see what maybe you guys think who he kind of reminds you of. But I have somebody in mind as well. Um, six foot one, two twenty two. He ran a four five nine as well. When you look at what he's strong at, he is a winner. 38 and 4 as a starter. Uh, people love playing for him because of his leadership traits. He's a very good leader. He's tough and he's durable, which is what you want. I mean, he takes hits very well. He's able to run through tackles, which you're not going to want him to do as much at the NFL level. You're going to want him to slide down, but he's able to go through go through tackles if need be. On top of that, his accuracy is very good, um, especially from the short to the intermediate routes. Um, deeper routes is where we kind of get a little shaky, but he's got very good accuracy, especially in that 10 to 15 range. Um, and he's also a talented runner. I mean, 614 carries is a lot for a quarterback. But to translate that to over half of the amount of touchdowns you've thrown in your in your college career, that's absolutely insane. Um, and then you look at what he's kind of needs to work on. Um, he's got to be more consistent with all of his throws. Um, sometimes he doesn't lead the receivers that need to be running after the catch. Um, he's got to throw it, the deep ball right. Um, C.D. Lamb was a big help to him this year, definitely. But um, and Oklahoma just being a quarterback university right now is absolutely great for him. But I think that he can translate that to the NFL level as well. And he's got to trust his pocket more. Um, he doesn't really have to scramble out of the pocket as much as he did. Um, his legs are a wonder, and yes, he should be able to use them. But if he can sit in the pocket, especially with a, a, a line like the Chargers are building right now, I think that he could turn out to be a very solid quarterback at the NFL level and a starter within his first two years and I think a perfect guy to learn behind is Tyrod Taylor Tyrod Taylor is a rushing quarterback who has kind of been that the, the prototype for the rushing quarterback the past few years um, he's pretty much as quick as much as you see as a guy who he's primarily going to be used for running but he doesn't turn the ball over much when he's throwing the ball he's actually had a very productive starting career if you look back at it and Colin had a Colin Coward had a good segment on it comparing him to Cam Newton I'm um, just kind of showing what people forget about Tyrod Taylor just because he has been getting that backup role um, he got benched for Baker Mayfield, which obviously they drafted number one overall was going to happen. But Tyrod Taylor is a very good starter. I think that Jalen Hurts can learn behind him, and when he's ready to play, he can play. The guy he reminds me of is Dak Prescott. When you look at what he does, he's got the strong base. He's able to run through tackles. He's able to run the ball very well. His deep ball isn't the most consistent, but you look at what Dak Prescott has done since his rookie year till now, his deep ball is very, very, very much better now. He's got the clutch dream. People love playing for him. He's a good leader. He's a winner. He, he likes being clutch in the fourth. I mean, these are things that Dak Prescott has embodied for the NFL as well for the Cowboys. So getting a guy like Jalen Hurts for the Chargers, he can be your next franchise quarterback, especially with the offense um, building around him. He gets more offensive line help in the next season, and I think that this is just a guy you can run home with and never look back. Jalen Hurts out of Oklahoma at pick 71, a perfect quarterback to sit behind Tyrod for some time and end up taking the starting job over. Then we look at pick 112, linebacker Joe Bocci out of Michigan State. Um, there's one big issue. That's the only reason why Machi's down here, in my opinion. I think he would have been a day a day two, round two guy um, if he 
didn't have this one thing. We'll get to that in a minute. But first off, 6'1", 230, 467 at the combine, 26 reps on the bench press. Uh, he had a 33 and a half inch vertical, which is pretty solid for a, a middle linebacker. Um, 285 tackles with 28 tackles for loss, seven sacks and five picks. What you love about him, he is a captain for three years, and he was a starter for three years. Uh, so he has a leadership traits. He surpassed 100 tackles twice out of his three years as a starter. Um, he has very smart IQ. He knows where the plays are going to be going. He's not out of position. He knows where the quarterback is looking and where they're going to be going with it, so he reads them very well. What is, what is his big – okay, like all these things sound great. Like I said, he probably should have been a day, a day two, round two kind of guy. What's wrong with him? Well, he's just suspended for half of the season this year. For his use of PEDs, he got caught – um, taking PEDs, had to be suspended for the last half of the season. And that's a big red flag for NFL teams because you got to trust your guys. you got to discipline them. You don't want to be paying somebody to, and then have them not play because um, you're counting on them. You want them to – you pay. You paid them, you drafted them, you signed them because you want them to play. If they're not playing, not because of an injury, but because of their own stupidity, um, that's a big red flag for teams. So I think a team is going to have to take a risk on a Joe Bocci to make sure that he's not going to be able to do that again. You've seen players bounce back from PEDs and play very well. Um, another thing he's not too hot at, he can't be left in man coverage too often. Um, he will get burned, and he's not the most athletic when he reacts. Um, he's He knows where the play's going, and he's able to get there, but um, he's got to be quicker and uh, move his hips a lot better to do it. I think Bocci can end up being a captain at the NFL level on the linebacker side if he can stay off of the PEDs, if he can really have learned his lesson. I think he can get back to what he's done at Michigan State and I think he'd be a very very good linebacker and a draft day steal for the Chargers I think right now the Chargers draft has a lot of steals for them and I think that's going to be very good for the Chargers especially going into next year um, AFC is a, a lot more open with Brady out of it obviously you still have to deal with Mahomes but um, getting a guy like Bocce can just help you that much more to get the Chargers right back up into contention where you want them to be at pick 151, I have them selecting running back A.J. Dillon out of Boston College. A.J. Dillon is kind of what the NFL's power back is looking like, like nowadays. Six foot, 247. He ran a 4.53 at the combine, 23 reps on the bench. He had a 41-inch vertical, which is very good for a guy at his size and weight. Um, eight, 845 carries for over 4,382 yards, 38 touchdowns. He also added 21 catches for 236 yards and two touchdowns. Not really that effective in the catch game. Um, but can do it if he needs to be. Some strengths he has, he surpassed 150 rushing yards in a game in over 42% of his games. Um, that's absolutely insane um, to be able to run the ball that much. That also shows how much they've used him, um, which is uh, going to be a concern later. Um, he has lots of tele uh, television touchdowns. Uh, I mean, that 38 touchdowns in, in his college career is very good for a guy at Boston College. Um, I think he's very solid. He moves piles as well as he can hop over them if he needs to. Um, this is a guy that's not going to get stopped at the line if he can help it, um, and that's something you really want a running back. And he has strong arms. I mean, you look at what he's doing right there. He's able to push somebody down to the ground, hit, hit stiff arms. He's able to shrug somebody off, drag them, fight for the extra yardage, and that's something you really want in your running backs. Um, you look at what he doesn't do well. Well, he's not the quickest. Um, four or five three speed isn't the best out of running backs, and I think that that's okay. You have a guy like Austin Eckler you believed in. You let Melvin Gordon go. So getting a Austin Eckler, who's a pass catch specialist, who's able to run the ball quickly, you get a guy like AJ Dillon to be able to to rotate in there, um, fight for that running back two spot, and he can definitely be a power back. I think that his volume speaks very well for him. I think he he could even turn out to be um, used very well his rookie year, even drafted as late as one fifty one. Um, he's not the best in the catch game. We already talked about that. He's not really going to be needed as much in the catch game when you have a guy like Eckler. And then uh, his burst, it's not the best. He has some burst, especially when he gets out into the open field. He has a little bit. You can see the burst a little bit, but he's got to he's got to learn how to tune up field a little bit quicker. Um, kind of get more tread on those um, tires, make him make him go a little bit harder into the hole if he needs to be. And his durability is going to be a question mark. I mean, his volume was a lot in college. You you don't know how long he's going to last in the NFL. So that's a big question mark for him. But I think at 151, you get a guy like A.J. Dillon to replace the hole you have at running back now with um, Melvin Gordon leaving. You have an open spot in that running back depth chart. I think a guy like A.J. Dillon could def definitely help even into the first year um, with his power back mentality. Then we move on over to pick 186. I am selecting defensive tackle Darion Daniels out of Nebraska. 
Darion Daniels is a weird case because he's had five years of, of um, college eligibility. He played four years at Oklahoma State and then transferred to Nebraska for his final season. He's six foot three, 311 pounds, um, 91 tackles, and 11 tackles for loss was his stat line in college. Not the most productive college uh, season. He's definitely a guy who's going to plug the hole a lot more than he is going to be the stats guy. Um, but what people have said about him, they love him in the locker rooms. Like they, they've, He's one of the most fun guys to be around is, is what people have said. Um, you like spending time with him. I mean, pe- the players like be- him being around, so I think that's something that you could use a lot well um, on that defensive line. He's quick off the snap. Um, he kind of gets out of his stance very quick. He can get engaged with a blocker very well. And he's got he has the right technique. His technique is good. Um, he could he could make it blossom a little bit more, make it great. But he's got good technique. The problem, well, durability. In the last three seasons, 2017, 2018, 2019, he's missed time in all of those seasons, which is a little bit worrisome. On top of that, he needs to learn to get through the locks. Um, he's not really, he, like I said, he's a disruptor. He's going to push a lineman back. Um, but if he can learn how to get through the blocks, get through them, and um, be able to make plays in the backfield, I think that's going to be even better for him. Um, his injuries has kind of, and his transfer, it's kind of made him fall pretty far down. But this is a guy who, I mean, if if healthy, he could end up being a solid D tackle to have in your depth chart. Um, I don't think he's going to be a number one at, at any time in his career, but he definitely could be a rotational guy who you don't feel uncomfortable putting him out there in situations. Um, and with how good this defensive line is, especially with uh, Jerry Tillery hopefully making a better um, season than he did last year, I think that this is a guy who you can add as depth in the D tackle position and build up from there. Um, like I said, his production was kind of lackluster, but it's a lot of durability problems. Um, if he stays healthy, I think he's worth a sixth-round pick because of the upside that you can get out of Darion Daniels. Then with pick 220, I have him selecting punter Michael Turk out of Arizona State University. Um, this is a guy where I think that you're going to be able to have your punter for the rest of time until he's ready to retire. Um, you have Michael Badgley, who, I mean, injury concerns have been uh, a little bit lackluster last year, but Badgley's one of the best kickers in the NFL, I think, when he's healthy. Um, at least personally, I think so. And when you go to the seventh round, I mean, punters and kickers, you, if you waste a seventh round draft pick on them and they don't work out, you cut them, it's okay. Um, kickers and punters are definitely somebody you can rotate out of much. But this is a guy who I think will be a very, very good punter. Um, First of all, let's just go over the physical things. He ran a 4.79 at the combine, and he had 25 reps on the bench press. That's more than Mackay Becton had. Mackay Becton had 23 reps on the bench press. Turk had 25. Everyone saw it on Twitter. It was absolutely insane um, what he did at the bench press. He's Matt Turk's nephew. Um, Turk was a 19-year uh, punter in the NFL. Um, on top of that, his first game in um, college football for, at ASU, he broke the NCAA record for 63 yards per punt. Um, on a minimum of five punts, I think it was. So he broke an NCAA record in his very first game. Um, his this year he had 67 uh, punts for uh, and for 382 or 3,000. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed a number on here. It's 3,000 over 3,000 yards in 67 punts, uh, 46 yards on average. The, his strength is strength. I mean, you 25 reps on the bench press. I mean, you look at him right there. He is a muscular dude. He's able to completely boot the ball downfield and do it very well at a high level um, he gets hang time on the ball so it, it allows the 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 guys to go down there and make the tackle make the play force a, for, a fair catch if possible the only the weaknesses that I have for him is that he only had one year at ASU um, this was his one year and he declared for the draft before that he was at an FCS school um, and on top of that the strength can poison issue in the punt game just due to um, you punt the, the ball a little bit too far it goes into a touchback um, you punt it too far it, it may, may be too fast, too hard, it can let the returner have a better return. Um, so he's got to be able to pinpoint where the um, punt can go, learn how to get it perfectly in the 20, um, cause the hang time, and I think that he's able to do it all. Um, yes, there is kickers and punters in this in this draft class, um, seven-round draft class. Uh, it's for the brand. And with that, at pick 22, or pick 220, that would be the last pick for the Chargers. Um, like I said, it was a fun mock draft for them because they just have one pick each round. It makes it a lot easier for um, them and for me to do the, the drafts as well. So let me know if you're a Chargers fan what you think about the mock draft. Let me know what you would do differently. Um, obviously, there's going to be a lot of people that maybe want a Justin Herbert. Um, so let me know what you think the Justin Herbert c- scenario would be. Go down there below. Let me know what your mock draft would be as well. Let me know what team you'd like to see for this mock draft. And of course, like I said, if you're part of the 95% that aren't subscribed, please hit the subscribe button as we're building the channel up pretty well. Um, want to keep doing these videos as much as I can so it shows me with the support that uh, you guys like seeing these videos. So on top of that, 
Uh, leave a like if you did enjoy. If you didn't enjoy the video, be sure to refresh the page. Check it out again and see if you like it the second time. And without further ado, that would be it for me. And I'll see you guys in the next video.